Well, good morning, Team Rhode Island. Really a pleasure to be with you, and I congratulate you on being part of this program in this very interesting time we live in. You've done a great job, and all of us as judges, very proud of the work you have put in and of your teacher for getting you here. And we really look forward to a conversation about the Constitution. I am Robert Allison. I teach history at Suffolk University, which is in Boston. And now I will have my colleagues introduce themselves. I'm Jack Barlow. I teach politics at Juniata College here in Pennsylvania. I'm Lindsey Draper, retired from the juvenile court bench here in Milwaukee County, Wisconsin, currently vice president for diversity, equity, and inclusion in the Institute for Lawyer Wellbeing. And now if I can ask you to introduce yourselves and your teacher and also tell us what part of the ocean state you call home. I'm Carter Chardier. I live in North Smithfield, Rhode Island. Uh, I'm Jack Boabai. I live in North Smithfield, Rhode Island. I'm Olive Norega. I live in North Smithfield, Rhode Island. I'm Grace Sandy. I live in North Smithfield, Rhode Island, and we're freshmen at North Smithfield High School. Thank you. And your teacher is? Our teacher is Miss O'Brien. She thank teaches you. our weekly class. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Miss O'Brien, and thank you all. So unit two has um, Big question, how did the framers create the Constitution? And our question for you this morning is, what were the major disagreements among the 55 delegates during the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia, and how were they resolved? And then we have two additional things to think about. What issues, if any, were not resolved, and what were the consequences? And what changes, if any, should be made to the Constitution? So please begin. The Constitutional Convention took place on May 25th, September 17th, 1787. 55 delegates, led referred as the framers of the Constitution, attended the convention. Only 12 of the 13 colonies were present, and the goal was to only reform and make changes to Articles of Confederation. However, with the introduction of the Virginia Plan, the focus switched to the creation of the new Constitution that would establish basic principles that the whole country would abide to. Although they valued republicanism, rights, and limited government, there were many disagreements. Many debates were held during the four months, including. What are the direct powers of the president? Who was a citizen? Were African-American citizens? Who has the power to decide or declare who a citizen is? Who is allowed to vote? Do all citizens have the right to vote? Should there be equal representation in the Senate? The delegates tried to avoid talking about slavery, but it could not be avoided forever. But they also feared the threats of the South seceding so early in the timeline of the country if slavery was abolished. They needed to come up with a compromise in order for the newly formed country to survive. After months of debate, many of the disagreements were resolved in some way. A significant solution of representation was found in the Connecticut Compromise, which created a bicameral legislature with proportional representation in the House for the larger states and equal in the Senate for the smallest states. Although many, including James Madison, did not agree with this compromise because they fear minority rule, it was made fairly permanent in the Constitution. Article 5 states, and that no state without its consent shall be deprived of equal suffrage in the Senate, end quote. Another issue that was resolved was the separation of powers. They decided that the three branches made up the national government. They each had their own powers that could check and limit the other. Madison emphasized this important principle in Federalist 51. They also devised a method to fix problems with the Constitution, such as the amendment process in Article 5. They provided future generations with tools and methods to fix the problems that may arise. For example, the Founding Fathers were never foretold marriage to be a federal issue. Because of this, in Oberfeld v. Hodges, the 14th Amendment was interpreted to extend the right of liberty to marriage. The Founding Fathers only thought this document was going to last a decade or two, not two centuries. This led to a lot of unanswered questions. Thank you. Is that the end of your presentation? Where are the I'm sorry. It's... Oh, wait. Am I frozen? Am I frozen? You're good now. Go ahead. These issues that were not resolved contributed to significant problems later on. 
One of the main unanswered questions was slavery. As America gained territory, this issue grew in importance, as the policies about voting and citizenship. Many of these were unresolved problems that sparked the Civil War in 1861. Along with, the, along with the issue of slavery, the issue of federalism was not determined. Many people, specifically Southerners, argued that the national government should not have too much power. They were in fear of it becoming like the British monarchy that they had fought so hard to get away from. Eventually, with the passage of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, many questions became more clarified. Although even today the barriers between state and national governments remain unclear, we believe flexibility may have been what, the, what was intended by the framers. Although the Constitution is not as difficult to change as the Articles of Confederation were, very few amendments have been added. This process is found in Article 5, where only 27 amendments have been ratified and added to the Constitution. Many people in states propose new amendments to be added to the Constitution, which most were denied in Congress. Some proposed amendments include the idea of abolishing the Electoral College. This amendment was proposed by Stephen Cohen in the 117th Congress. This would have benefited larger states in population, such as California and Texas, where the other hand would almost eliminate electoral power of smaller states such as Rhode Island and New Jersey. This is seen in the New Jersey plan presented and created by William Patterson. Another amendment that was proposed by the 116th Amendment Congress was, lowered the, was lowering the voting age to 16. This shows the ultimate demonstration of a combination of a republic and a democracy from the Constitution of the United States drafted by the Founding Fathers and framers of the country based on the people for the people. Well, thank you very much. Good job. So uh, we will have some time for questions. One of the, um, well, Rhode Island wasn't part of the convention and you made it clear in your discussion of the Electoral College, things Rhode Island might have feared. I wonder if you could say a little bit more about the balance in the constitution between state and federal power and how it achieves that. Um, through the constitution, it created a bicameral legislature where they had two separate branches where one would be based on proportional representation based for the people and one would be based on state legislators. So that would give more power. So Congress would be more representative of the states when it came to federal power. So I'm sorry, I, I went out of turn here. I apologize. No, it's, uh, no, you're, it's all yours. So you've made reference to um, a number of things that were unresolved. What if I were to posit to you that I don't think the Constitutional Convention resolved anything. They basically deferred everything that was controversial and we let a civil war solve part of it. We let other things, we just didn't solve anything. We just agreed to form a country. Would you agree with me? I agree with you. Um, I think that the founders intended to remake this constitution in a decade or two. So they kind of just made the method like Article 5, and they kind of just set a foundation for a newly formed country to survive because they really needed something at the time. I would also uh, kind of have to agree with you there. Um, I, I believe that there, there are so many unresolved questions is because they had to come up with so many compromises. Even back then, um, that there were many differences between Southern states and North states or big states and small states. That's why I had to come up with the great compromise uh, for a bicameral legislature and everything like that. Right, they weren't planning for this document to last for so long where they intended for there to be a lot of flexibility. Um, that's why in Article 5 is actually the main way why our constitution grants us certain powers. Okay, right, so thank you. Sorry, so what do you all think about, <clears throat> about the issue of uh, judicial review? Because that was another thing that they left Un unresolved at the convention. Um, that seems to have become, in a way, our, our go-to technique for changing the Constitution. Um, so what do you think about it? Um, was it intended and was it intended to be what it is now? Would you get rid of it? I wouldn't get rid of the judicial review as it gives a lot of more power to the, to the power of Supreme Court. 
Um, besides that, if they didn't have judicial review, they wouldn't really be much of a powerhouse. Um, they wouldn't have as much checks and balances, and um, they wouldn't be able to do as much changing as they could. It would be more up to Congress to change those bills or even rip down more bills and amendments. I agree with Carter. I agree that the two main powers of the Supreme Court is judicial review and the power of interpretation. But doesn't judicial review put the power to change things in the hands of unelected judges as opposed to the elected representatives whom we've chosen? I think that um... I believe that there is that that is a problem, but the Congress has many different things that they deal with, and I feel like the Supreme Court has this one thing that they need. Without it, it wouldn't really be a Supreme Court. I'm just curious, what would your thoughts be? And get raised earlier about a new constitutional convention. What would you feel? It, how would you feel about us having a new one? now so in article five we have two separate ways to actually make amendments and one of those is to have another constitutional convention um but it's not been used um it's barely i don't think it's ever been used um it takes a lot of time to get all the delegates together it's really not as efficient as the other amendment processes and overall with they weren't expecting for representatives from thirty thousand, which anti-federalists feared to go to six hundred thousand for one representative so there would be, especially with our population of the United States now, there would be a lot of people at that. Well, I mean, my recollection is about 25 states have already called for a new constitutional convention. So it's not as though it's not conceivable. Um, do you think that'd be a good idea? I would say no, having a new convention would not be a good idea. I think the framers were very smart in the beginning to kind of have more unresolved problems. So that would allow for change. Um, all these new things that are coming up today, I think people would want to look for more answers and everything. And I think that's more of a bad thing because that sets everything in stone and then there's no room for change or interpretation that the founders okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Okay, so um, what do you think about the Senate? Should we uh, revise the way the Senate is chosen? Should we make it more proportional? Um, and this, this would make us less Republican and more representative, more Democratic. Uh, but wouldn't that be a good thing? I don't think it would be a good thing because our country is based on four states to have two separate powers, one based on population and one based on the really the New Jersey and the Virginia plan. Um, but if we ripped down the Senate and their powers of how they're elected by state legislators and not directly by population, um, it would give a lot less states to states like our state, Rhode Island. We would have pretty much absolutely no power as we have 150th the population as California. Um, the people that live here would have no say in government, and I don't think that's what our Constitution was intended for. Any further questions from Jack or Lindsay? Um, well, I'm curious, what do you think about seniority in Congress? Because you've got some pretty senior folks there. And that certainly would have an effect, right? I mean, if Rhode Island has a very senior person in Congress, it would, uh, wouldn't it increase Rhode Island's power? I think with power from Rhode Island and other states that have seniority in Congress. Um, that is a problem that we have uh, as long as terms as they do. Um, but there is a reason why that there's those type of terms where they have a lot more power and a lot more people. Okay, thanks. Thank you. What I one of the things I really liked about your presentation, and there were other many things I did like about your presentation, was it is clear you understand the need to protect the interests of small states like Rhode Island. And James Madison would have understood that too. And then that is great to hear you speaking up in favor of this uh, protection for 
the small state, states like Rhode Island. So um, thank you. And you did a very, you're, you're, and I really like to, I think we have heard more about Article 5 in the last 10 minutes than I, I've heard in years. So this is good to have a focus on a particular part of the Constitution, as well as you did a really good job with your framing of how the Constitution was created. What are the issues they didn't resolve? I like the way each of you had something to say about that. And then getting to the big issue of slavery, which wasn't resolved, and then having a really interesting point that the Constitution wasn't imagined that it was going to last for 240 years. And presumably the framers thought that we would be able to solve our own problems. And they did give us structure through which we can solve it. So um, I really enjoyed both your initial presentation and then the conversation we have had since about different things that uh, might or may not be good ideas. And the fact that you're thinking about all of these things and actually engaging with each other and with us, I look forward to hearing from all of you, not only in you know, your years ahead in college, but in your lives as citizens, because I think each of you is going to make a tremendous difference in how the Republic is kept, as Benjamin Franklin said, it is up to you to do it. So thank you. Is it up to me? Okay. It's up to you, Jack. Sorry. Um, you, you guys were nice and low key about, you know, Rhode Island, right? I mean, you said only 12 states and you didn't say we didn't go. We're not responsible for this, right? Uh, it's not our fault, um, and and that's fine. Um, but I wonder, you know, I mean, Rhode Island was regarded by many of the other states as being an obstruction. Um, you guys were the problem, right? I mean, we're trying to trying to keep people from uh, from succeeding by dragging their feet the way Rhode Island did. Um, over a number of issues in the in the 1780s, so um, we might have talked a little bit more about that and and just but you made you kind of just kept that low key and 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 went on about your business and that's fine. Um, I thought your your in your opening statement you talked uh, you mentioned Obergefell you mentioned the amendment process. Um, which is why I wanted to start asking you about judicial review and sort of how you were going to work that into your scheme. Um, because that's interesting, you know, I mean, how, <clears throat> how judges work and, and is that kind of indirect uh, legislation, uh, which is really what it is, uh, how does that carry out the, the vision of the framers in terms of what this constitutional uh, scheme is going to look like. Um, so I thought you raised some really key questions. Um, it's clear you've been uh, talking about this, thinking about this, as Dr. Allison said, uh, you're going to be citizens for a long time. And you are better informed than a lot of other citizens about the things that are going on uh, and the way the government works. And I hope you will keep on informing yourself and talking about this. Uh, because this is this is crucial. So you're well prepared for college. Um, come on out to Juniata and look at us when you're ready. And uh, we will, uh, uh, I'll see you then. And after you've seen Juniata, come up to Boston. <laughs> I'm going to sit back and watch this war go on here for a while. No, okay. So let me start with, um, I really enjoyed what you all did. And it, it, I should not have let uh, Professor Barlow go first because he touched on some things. We took a very different view of it. When you started off with 12 of 13 were present, I looked at that as your way of saying, and I trust you people know that it was Rhode Island who didn't go because we expected some things to happen. I mean, I took that as your way of saying, I hope you all know this stuff. Because a huge piece of how I see Rhode Island's approach was you all said we were going to do something and you all got there and cheated because you weren't supposed to be able to change things because we weren't there. 
you all broke the rules. Now we got to find a way to work with y'all. I mean, that I loved that beginning, just so that you know, I want to start with that. Um, I was pleased with the references to Fed 21. You talked about, you gave me a very detailed, these were the disagreements. This is how the compromise came about. Um, the, the reference to federal Federalist 51, Obergefell, you, you talked about the things, yes, 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment tried to resolve some things. I, you touched on what I needed to hear. Uh, the fact that you talked about the New Jersey plan, um, I kind of enjoyed it and felt I heard what was important. Uh, and I want to be sure you know that because, oh, sometimes I know what I expect to hear. And then when people don't give it to me, I go, they missed it. And you didn't, you got to it. So want to be sure you know how proud all three of us are of you and the work that you and your teacher have done. Um, it is just a thrill listening to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice job, nice job.